Um, we are in the beginning of December, the birthday of Felix Nussbaum, the great painter, was born in Osnabrück uh, just after 1900. And it is truly strange to me how I came across that name, which is now beginning to radiate around the world, uh, remembering works of a great artist who was hounded and ultimately killed in the Shoah and the Holocaust. Uh, but I was living in Berlin at that time, uh, and I took a walk very close to my studio, which was uh, on Bregenterstrasse, and I took a little walk, and uh, I stumbled on one of those plaques uh, that Berlin uh, sometimes has on houses of eminent people. And I read the name Felix Nussbaum and the short uh, German uh, information, who he was, a great painter, and what happened to him, he died or was murdered in Auschwitz uh, in 1945. And I went home, I remember, and said to myself, you know, I've never heard of this painter. It's, it's an interesting and tragic tale that I just read on, on the tablet on, on, a, on a house front, that, but I couldn't find anything on, on Nussbaum. And I got more and more interested. Uh, and I went to my, uh, you know, 24 volume Jewish encyclopedia, looking up the name Nussbaum, nothing. It was only a little bit later on that I discovered who he was. And of course, it was then that I participated in the competition for the Felix Nussbaum House in Osnabrück, which for me at least was fortunate. It was really the first building I realized. And the life of uh, Felix Nussbaum is, is a remarkable one. A man who had the confidence and the greatness of German tradition and of the Jewish tradition of, of painting his experience. And ultimately his experience uh, as of 1933 took a very dark turn because he was hounded by the Gestapo, by the Nazis. He escaped, his scholarship uh, for the, in Rome was taken away from him. He became a persona non grata in Germany. He was uh, put into uh, camps uh, from which he escaped, uh, and so on and so on. He finally wound up in Brussels, where unfortunately his neighbors gave him away, and he perished in Auschwitz with his wife, also a Polish Jewish painter, Fulka Plotek. They together perished uh, in in one of the last transports to Auschwitz in 1945. But he always thought that his paintings were going to document a meaning of life, and that's what he wrote in one of his. Uh, notebook entries that if anyone finds these paintings, uh, look at them. You might actually discover something that's important for you, something about the meaning of life. And indeed, uh, to me, he is one of the great forces of modernity, a painter who was closely related to the life of Germany of his time. He painted in the great romantic styles of the German painters of the late 19th and early 20th century, expressionism and so on, all the different movements. And finally, wound up painting the dance of death and the, and, and, uh, the survivors looking at the fragments of what remains of the world. And finally, that's the question he asks us today to consider. What do we make of the world today? A world that is still plagued by hatreds, by bigotries, by antisemitism, by all sorts of evils uh, that have befallen mankind before and will do so in the future. But Felix Nussbaum senses a spirit that opposes this pessimism, that speaks of res resolve in the face of darkness, and speaks of art as a spiritual uplifting phenomenon. Felix Nussbaum's art can lift us out of this darkness it can give us hope. It can turn us towards the good and away from evil. It is really an art of inspiration and 
a, a, an art of uh, the indefatigable human spirit that is permanently important for us. I do love Felix Nussbaum's paintings and I wish that everyone remembered not only his birthday, but look at his paintings. And I was so lucky to come on that name accidentally and that my life had grown to make a deeper and deeper connection with this remarkable person. <laughs>